Hello, my name's Joey, and today I'm going to be talking about Pete Benson's book, Towers of a Prop Man. In the extremely colourful location of my shed. Now, Towers of a Film Prop Man by Pete Benson. Basically, Pete Benson was my old boss when I used to work at... He wasn't old. He's my old boss from the past. Um... I used to work for a prop hire company called All Props. It was my first avenue into the world of professional props. And it was an amazing place full of absolutely everything. All props, as the title suggests, suggested. And um, obviously, if you're making a film in England or anywhere else and you need to dress a set, you'll go to a prop hire company. So whether you need to dress a police station, somebody's flat, somebody's shed... You will go to a prop hire company to get said bits and pieces to dress it. That is actually from All Props. That's a, an, an American Navy mallet. And that was actually used in the David Jason film as a murder weapon called The Ghost Boat. And that's one of the things I got from All Props. Anyway, uh, so yes, you'll go to hire companies and you will get those parts, hire them and dress your sets. So that's how I came to know Pete Benson. And very quickly... He became a friend, not really a boss. Um, and in that way, you didn't want to let your friend down when you were working for them. So that was the kind of relationship that we had there at All Props, which is a great way to run a business. And I always remember him saying he didn't want to run a business the way you should run a business. He he studied business studies and um, he's very highly qualified in, in how to run a business, but he wasn't going to do it. I suppose the corporate way or the kind of really stiff way, who knows, it was more relaxed. And then, then you, I suppose, God, we were working. My God, they were hard days because there were so many people that would come in and hire the bits and pieces. Um, we had to hand write everything and our, our hands were dead at the end of the day. We, our, our style of writing was just appalling. And, um, you know, sometimes we did overtime and we'd be there from eight to seven o'clock at night, you know. Um, so there was there were fun days and there were hard days, but you know it wasn't it wasn't a chore. It was still fun. The chore was the work, but it was overall fun. So anyway, um, the all props hire company was set up by four prop men: uh, Dennis Hopperton, Les Benson, Peter Benson. They were brothers, and George Ball. I only worked with George Ball for the first week that I was there, then he left. I didn't make him leave, he was leaving anyway. And um, Pete Benson and Les Benson I worked with, which I didn't know at the time. This book describes that uh, those four men I've just mentioned, they were the top prop men in the country. So they didn't ask to work on films. They were asked by the films to work on them. Uh, and I had no idea about that. And I learned so much working at All Props that you know, to learn here in this book that technically I was trained by the top prop men in the country, that was brilliant. Um, and there were such humble people that they would never tell you. It's only written down here in, 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 in the book. And it's not written down to show you, oh, look at me. It's, it's, it's about history. It's about preserving history. Um, so that I found this book very inspiring. Uh, it mentions about how never getting caught out. And I very much live my life like that. Uh, if things break, you've got everything you need then and there. And as Pete was a prop man in the film industry, he would travel, travel the world with toolboxes and uh, everything needed just in case anything went wrong. And if anything went, went right, you still had everything, you know. Um, so it mentions about literally traveling the world. If you work in the film industry, it's a very, very, uh, you don't get much free time. This is what this book highlights, is that you could be working, say, in St. Lucia or Scotland for eight months, maybe maybe six months, well, that's less. But you could be working that time and you'll be away from your family and you'll probably be you know, waking up at 5 a.m. in the morning, maybe earlier, finishing filming at 11 o'clock, maybe 2 o'clock, and then doing the whole thing again the next day for the next couple of months. You probably get one day off. Um, so working in the film industry, if you do work in the film industry, you'll know how hard it is. If you do want to work in the film industry, it is hard as well. Be prepared to not have much free time, but be prepared to have great stories because this is what this book is about. 
He mentions meeting Elizabeth Taylor, how he had a drink with Elizabeth Taylor in a pub. He had a football uh, match with Bill Murray. Um, names escape me. Uh, he also worked on The Professionals, which was a, an extremely popular series, which still is now. And he never mentioned that. As I said, he's a very humble man. And he worked on some of the greats. There's a film called The Keep, which wasn't received very well when it came out. But it's like most films that aren't received very well. It's now a cult classic. People love it. And he worked on that. Um, he worked with Robert De Niro. There's some great stories about how Robert De Niro is a very meticulous actor. If he's uh, pretending to do a trade and he might do something wrong, he'll want to take the whole thing again. If he messes up one line in the script, he'll want to do the whole thing again. So he's very, very meticulous, very kind of, this has to be right. So I found that very interesting. It also mentions about the choices you make in life, uh, the fateful choices that lead to wonderful things. So it's very, very influential in that respect. It's, um, it's told in very, very easy to read chapters. And uh, it, it, as I say, it's very down to earth. Um, I read this a month ago. I loved it. And for me, it was very, very, it was very, very unique to get the history of the people who I came to work with. Because this is about their time in the film industry. Um, I came in late when they'd already set up the hire company. The book ends around the beginning of the hire company. He is actually going to make a second book. Make it. I'm not going to grab that hammer again and start making it. He is actually going to write a second book. That's in the process at the moment. So that will be more about the all props days, which would be interesting as well, because, you know, it's not uncommon to get a phone call and someone ask, could you make me a bomb? And you say yes, because that's what that's not an unusual thing. The most unusual thing I think we answered the phone call to was somebody said, do you have a, an inflatable Mussolini? To which I had to swallow my tongue and say, I think that's something you might have to get made. I don't know. We didn't have an inflatable Mussolini, strangely enough, but we did have pretty much everything else. Um, so, yes, a very influential book. If you want to find out about what your life might be like in the film industry, definitely read it. If you want some inside information about Bill Murray in a film, this might highlight a Bill Murray film you've never seen before. I've never seen it. It was a, it was a serious film that Bill Murray, Bill Murray was in, um, not a comedy. I didn't know Bill Murray up until doing Lost in Translation had done serious films. So that's interesting. But um, it's definitely worth a read. Great book. Loved it. Very influential. Lots of things strike a chord in you. Um, and I'll end it on a, a kind of an idea that if you're the prop man on film and TV, you you know, you, you're the be all and end all of what is asked to do. Um, so if you have to, if you get asked to do something, you have to do it. So they were doing a horror film and it called to have um, dead animals in the field. And they had to go and find a local farm and ask the local farmer, did he have any animals that died naturally? Yes, they did. Well, they died weeks before. And you can imagine the state they were in. And um, they had to put them on the film set. And of course, Pete realised that that's what he's got to do and you've just got to do it. So he's lugging these dead animals and of course they stank and they weren't in a great state. And you've just got to do it. And that was pretty amazing to to, to read and to, to, to hear that you just had to do it. You know, there's no, I'm not going to touch that. So, yes, very influential on how hard life can be in the film industry when you're being asked to do things that you wouldn't normally do or dream of doing but um yes definitely worth a look i shall put a link to where you can buy the book on amazon from and um, if you do like the book please leave a review because that always helps the authors and uh yeah yeah definitely um as i say i wish i'd have annotated this book um because then it would be you know, I'd be able to pinpoint some of my uh, most influential things. But obviously, kind of good that I didn't because you need to find out these influential passages and phrases. I can't tell it to you. You need to read it. Anyway, thank you for watching. Uh, yes, there will be a link to Pete Benson's book. 
tales of a film prop man in the description and um yes i shall see you all soon thank you for watching Brrr.